we just released a brand new project titled Good Morning. Good Morning. We dance the whole night through. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. A musical short film through the ages. Now, how did this come about? Well, Andrew Pifko, a very talented friend of mine, approached me with an idea. We would take the beloved song, Good Morning from Singing in the Rain, because everyone loves that song. Who doesn't love that song? Do you not like that song? We can't be friends. And we'd flash it through the ages, so we'd put it through the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, back to present. All asking the question of what does it mean to say good morning each one of these eras. Now needless to say, this is a super ambitious project. We had a bunch of eras to cover, we had tons of costumes, locations, full crew, dance numbers, four principal cast members. But on top of all that, there was another added dimension. In a typical music video or anything that involves music, the song is recorded prior to the shoot. Now that's not how we did this. We were gonna film all of the singing of the production live. So when you see the actors opening their mouths, you're hearing the actual sounds. We've got a can of corn. Most projects don't film like this for a lot of reasons. Les Miserables. Les Miserables. Les Mis is actually a recent movie to do this. So this was a huge undertaking. Now, how did we go about doing this? So Brian Blasky, our music director, was sitting on a keyboard, and that was sent to an earpiece, which was placed in the actor's ear. So whenever he played the music, only the actors could hear him, not the camera or any other sound. Now, Brian is playing along with the metronome, which in post-production, we match up with live studio musicians, and at the end of the day, we had the live singing synced up with live instrumentation. Like the child of the dream, Does that make sense? Hopefully. We actually had a test shoot where we tested out the technical aspects of the production. And because all of it was wireless, we had complete freedom on how we were going to record. So the actors, technically with the earpiece in, could be walking down the street hearing music, singing along. Good morning. Good morning. We danced the whole night through. Good morning. Good morning. To you. But to the average bystander, they would just look like crazy people. Good morning. Good morning to, to you. you. With good singing voices. Now with the technical aspects figured out, the next thing to lock down was the creative aspects. What were we going to be doing? What was the narrative? What part were we going to hit in every decade? 20s flapper, luxury era with 30s depression, 40s propaganda, and the 50s is actually one of the most interesting ones because most people will look at the 50s and say, like, slick back hair, you know, leather jackets, like, hey, hey. But we decided to go a different route and hit on the beatnik, the art scene, and make it almost like a French New Wave era. Contre notre peur. Now mixing in with the singing of the eras, Katie Orr did an incredible job choreographing different dances for the 70s, the 90s, and the 50s. Now I remember in the rehearsals leading up to the shoot, my DP Nate Fu and I were standing watching them and he turns to me at the end of the rehearsal and he says, it's a great sign if just this, just them performing in a room with normal clothes and nothing else around them is super entertaining. Everything we do is just gonna add icing to that kick. And I always had that in mind going into the shoot because everyone was so talented, all we had to do was showcase that. Now we shot the whole thing in two days. It was a hefty two days. Now the first day I think was the most hectic. We had to knock down the present shoots, the 60s, the 30s, and the 20s. The present and 60s were in the same location, but the 20s and 30s were each at separate parts of LA. Uh, Andrew rented out actually a trailer, which became so crucial for the shoot. All the actors could go in there in between shots and get their makeup and wardrobe done, and actually they could be doing that while we're on the road. Now the second day was much more controlled, but no less hectic. We still had a lot of stuff to do. We were shot in independent studio in Woodland Hills, and so we used the different sections of the studio for different eras. This was a day with all of our dance numbers in it as well. It was a really fun shoot. I mean, how is it not fun having all those amazing costumes and people around? Our final shots of the day were scheduled to be in a hot tub limo. Now the funny thing is, when the hot tub limo showed up, it had a hot tub. But the hot tub wasn't working. So we had a hot tub limo without a hot tub. Who does that? Who rents out a hot tub limo without a working hot tub? Then it's just a normal limo. You shouldn't call it a hot tub limo. But we were able to shoot inside the limo and it looked really cool. Anyways, so we were able to do it. We pulled off shooting 10 different eras in two days. We had all sorts of shots, all sorts of things to cover, but it all got done, which I still think is quite impressive. Going to the post production was a decent amount of process. I was able to actually send the cut to my friend Alec Rost over at Final Cut New York, and they were able to post color and take the footage to make all the footage really feel like the eras were trying to hit. While that was happening, Andrew and Brian went to the studio with all sorts of live musicians and locked down the musical aspects of the track. And uh, when it all came together, it's an incredibly unique project that I don't think anyone's ever seen before. So now that you've heard everything about the Good Morning Project, you can watch it 
right up here. I think it's something that everyone involved can be proud of. I know I'm definitely proud of it. Subscribe up here to keep updated with everything I'm doing. I hope it brightens up your day. Or your morning. Stupid. Good morning. Good morning to you.